Um, hi, I've been um, in Los Angeles. Uh, boy, it seems like I must have uh, first crawled around uh, here on Bunker Hill as a young child, uh, which is quite true. Um, my father was brought in from Mexico um, at about the age of uh, three months and um, lived about a block away from here. And uh, I recall um, it must have been the first week of elementary school in kindergarten that I, I said, uh, I'm not sure this isn't really the place for me. And I ditched uh, immediately. <laughs> I, um, I was uh, very uh, adventuresome as a young child and uh, took to the streets. Uh, I, I grew up in East Los Angeles, but uh, co-equally uh, also grew up in downtown Los Angeles here. And um, I found that um, the streets of LA were um, uh, fairly vibrant uh, and increasingly so almost on a day-by-day -day basis um, from the time that I started on the streets, which was in the mid-50s, actually. And I um, uh, found that uh, uh, quite a few many things were uh, rather theatrical in nature, although they happened to be reality. They happened to be what was actually going on. Um, in fact, I was a witness to a tremendous amount of violence, uh, a tremendous amount of humor, a tremendous amount of, um, uh, we all um, uh, are presented with sort of the abstract uh, concepts uh, of social issues, of racism, uh, of police violence, of, um, of uh, poverty, um, uh, yet uh, my experience was a very direct uh, uh, sort of a, 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 to see these ideas in practice. And, um, but I think what I was always more interested in uh, was how people responded to it, how people were able to either um, survive the onslaught of these various issues or, or not survive. Um, and so I uh, found myself quite often at uh, the receiving end of a few too many um, uh, uh, interesting elements. Uh, for instance, uh, Nancy mentioned COININTELPRO. I was also someone that was uh, uh, listed with COININTELPRO at a certain point in my life. Um, uh, I also, um, uh, with uh, Karen's presentation, uh, the idea of learning how to say thank you and organizing with people uh, became sort of a very integral element of my work. Um, uh, I've worked with uh, quite a number of people uh, early on and realized that I had to use uh, sort, of a, a sort of a community um, uh, aspect in my work uh, and sometimes where communities weren't existent uh, to create communities. Uh, and so I've been working uh, for many years with either small groups or larger groups. And um, one of the groups that I've um, amassed over a period of time, uh, pretty close to, uh, uh, getting close to 20 years, I guess, has been um, sort of collecting a group of images of Chicano men in a series that I call Chicano Male Unbonded. Um, and these are all men who I know personally on some level uh, or have had some kind of impact on me uh, some of these men I've known for a long time, and some I've only known for a brief period of time, uh, but they remind me of people who were very important in my life. Um, and um, I photographed these men uh, in exterior settings at night using available light, um, and have them uh, come uh, uh, as they would like to be uh, presented, uh, have them dressed the way they would, but I actually encounter them on the street as someone else would encounter them on the street at night and photograph them as one might, uh, uh, you know, as they would emerge from the darkness and the light and um, have photographed these people. And um, I now have uh, close to 150 photographs. I've been shooting since 1991. Uh, uh, and many of the people that I know are either professionals or students or, or uh, relatives. Uh, and I've exhibited several of these works in various museums. and, and um, Far too often when I've shown some of these photographs, I've been asked uh, by some of the viewers, gallery members, uh, what gang is this? <laughs> and, uh, and of course this is uh, Vincent Ramos, so he received his MFA at CalArts last year. Uh, the previous gentleman was a very um, high level uh, entertainment lawyer. Uh, 
The previous gentleman was Ernesto Chavez, a professor at El Paso, uh, Texas. Uh, this is Francesco Siqueiro, uh, an artist, printer. This is uh, Rudy Acuna, uh, often referred to as the godfather of uh, Chicano studies in the United States. Actually, uh, quite famous at this point, uh, the state of uh, Arizona wants to outlaw his book uh, titled uh, Occupied America. They also want to outlaw anything pertaining to Mexican or Chicano studies that's uh, actually uh, facing the governmental board there at this point. Uh, this is my father, uh, who grew up a block away from here. He's uh, passed away four years ago. Um, this is, um, he was never one to be photographed and uh, finally agreed to be photographed uh, for this image. And this is Rick Salazar. Um, this is when I was uh, first starting this uh, series. I was jokingly telling him, uh, you know, you look over my shoulder, I'll look over yours, and we'll take care of each other. But just by chance, the glow in the background was a speeding freight train. Mm -hmm. Got out of the way in time. <laughs> and, uh, but Rick Salazar was in my first uh, course that I taught at CalArts uh, in 1988. And, uh, he went on to graduate with his MFA, and I guess ever since that time, he went on to become a financial analyst of all things. Uh, I've also worked with a large group of uh, performers over time. I now currently have a group of uh, 40 of uh, what I refer to as virtual performers. Uh, they come together only to perform briefly, uh, usually uh, the shooting of whatever event we're working on last literally minutes. Uh, we all get together, we, we have something to eat, I usually have something in mind, uh, but I'm kind of <coughs> working on this um, ongoing project for a video, but at the same time many of these images are, um, are designed to evoke either emotion or a sense of, um, of, uh, of uh, what, what it takes to survive psychologically in an urban environment. And some of these are actually part of the digital uh, works that I put together as PDFs with text. Um, and I have a, a, an extensive email list of about 10,000 people uh, throughout the world. Uh, and so once a month they receive uh, a message from me uh, titled Virtual A-List, in which I provide readings and usually some uh, new work, uh, maybe a video clip. Uh, and it usually involves uh, these performers. So, at some level, it's also um, discovering new audiences uh, and a growing audience and a fluctuating audience and uh, uh, sometimes presenting local concerns but that have global uh, implications. And of course, uh, I guess there's sort of a direct tie-in with my original group, uh, the OSCO group, um, something that deals with sort of the absurdist uh, notion of uh, being placed in an urban environment in which uh, Quite often we feel that we don't have an opportunity to control events, but we do have uh, the possibility of affecting the events. Uh, and again, sort of the, um, the mixture of sort of the uh, melodrama and the telenovela-esque uh, uh, style of surviving and, and making unimportant things appear to be important. And here I did a whole sequence of people that were, uh, were on command, could perform what was known as being brain dead. <laughs> I, I encourage people to uh, involve themselves, create, use their environments, use their bodies, uh, use their thoughts uh, to change uh, other, other ways of thinking and acting. Uh, there's always a possibility to do something new. Thank you.